Happy New Year 2024, y'all. Welcome back to the Cardinal. I'm your host, Ijan. And I'm Adriana. This is our first episode of the year, and I'm very excited to be your host for this week. It's time for our Did You Know segment. Did you know that the confetti in Times Square has thousands of people's wishes around them, Adriana? I didn't know that, actually, but what's the point? In 2015, their wish Fetty became a part of the tradition where people write down their wishes for the new year and put them on the wall in the wish wall at Times Square. Or online, those wishes turn into confetti that falls in the crowd at midnight. I think it's a great way by writing down your wishes and hoping to find a wish that you wrote in one of the confetti at Times Square. Ooh, that would be so cool. But did you know that in 1835, the U.S. debt was at zero for the first time ever? Crazy, huh? That's crazy how seeing we're at so much debt right now. But let's talk about the news of the week. Hello, everyone. It is a new year, and I have more new news for you. I'm TJ. Let's get started with the top three news of the week. First, we have Binks the stray cat, who saved six-year-old dog Oakley, who was just trying to use the bathroom. But then, he was ambushed by wild coyotes. Thanks to the cat's brave efforts on saving Oakley, a new invention was made to protect dogs from wild coyotes. Up next, we have the Tetris Titan Wilson Gibson, who beat the well-known block game Tetris to submission. While being only 13 years old, he has made a groundbreaking achievement and has won an award for his master stacking skills. And finally, for our last top three news, a Neptune's real colors were discovered after years of trying to find its true colors, which being a bold white color. It's so fascinating that everybody thought that Neptune was blue this whole time. I sure did. Well, that's all the news we have for today. Back to you, Ijon. Wow, I can't believe Neptune is having a color change, plus a cat fighting a coyote. That's bizarre. Have you ever given up on a New Year's resolution already? Well, 2023 was quite honestly an interesting year. In our next segment, we have to recap some of the best and worst moments of 2023. Do you have any New Year's resolutions, Adriana? Just to get good grades. Hmm. On this episode, TJ asked students and staff about their New Year resolutions. Maybe that'll help you decide what your resolution is too. 2023 was a year to remember. A lot of things happened throughout the year in the world and especially in Madison Park. You can't start this year before reflecting back on the big news that has happened nationally. First, the release of ChatGPT. ChatGPT is an AI software that gives very well automated responses depending on what you'd say to it. This revolutionized apps, schools, and life-changing things like hospitals, and job environments. Next up on big news, in August, India's third lunar exploration mission allowed them to be the fourth ever country to land on the moon. On the more musical side of things, Pink Friday 2 by Nicki Minaj has placed her number one in the US Billboard, also making her the first female artist with three number one albums, taking the internet by storm. Not everything was great during that year, and there are a few things worth remembering to learn from, like the Israel Hamas war. The Israel-Hamas war has led to more than 15,000 deaths in Palestine and 1,500 fatalities in Israel, along with many war crimes being reported almost constantly. Another year gone by, another global temperature record broken. Rising temperatures in the Atlantic Ocean, along with the effects of El Nino, led to plenty of tropical storms in the region, of which the World Meteorological Organization named 20. On a lighter yet still unfortunate topic, Deadpool 3, probably the most looked for Marvel movie in 2023, has been delayed. Release date is unknown, but reports have shared it being in the 2025 to 2026 range. There was a lot that happened last year here at Madison Park. Our MCAS passing rates in math and ELA subjects have reached or exceeded approaching pre-pandemic rates. The girls volleyball team won the city championship making October 27th their first win in 22 years in Madison Park history. Madison Park launched a new admission policy. Three students who participated in Rock's Map graduated with a high school diploma and an associate's degree from Bunker Hill Community College. Finally, the graduation rates have improved steadily over the past four years and reached over 80%. Now that we've covered last year's news, we're going to focus on the future and ask around for everyone's New Year's resolution. My New Year resolution this year is to take swimming classes because I don't know how to swim and I will love to learn how to swim. My New Year's resolution is to be a good teacher for my students. Uh, my New Year's resolution, uh, I ain't even gonna lie, it's, you gotta make big money moves for me because like I'm tired of being broke, I ain't even gonna lie, it's boring. I usually stay away from New Year's resolutions because I'm always trying to be better. But if I had to pick something to be my New Year's resolution, it would be more constructive and more productive with my time. Using my time to do the right thing, 
and be supportive and productive because you don't know how much time you got left. And I think that's one of the things we take for granted. Yeah, good stuff, TJ. It really got me thinking. Most New Year's resolutions aren't taken too seriously. And 80% of them of resolutions are beginning of the year are forgotten by February. So no really if you have to restart. Everyone was excited to have a day off yesterday celebrating Martin Luther King Day. Martin Luther King Jr. Day is a holiday in the United States marking the birthday of Martin Luther King Jr. Martin Luther King Jr. Born January 15th, 1929. Martin Luther King Jr. is a political philosopher and believed that you never needed violence to get your way. Opposed from someone else that was also running things during his time, Malcolm X, who used violence to get his way. You would think people that have different philosophies will be going against each other, but no, they were actually pretty good friends because at the end, they were all fighting for the same goal. Martin Luther King was able to talk and persuade as much as he could to be able to get that goal and reach it. Martin Luther King is one of the reasons why black students like us have things that we're able to access today, like in the school. He was also a big figure for multiple people, and people still live on by his philosophy today, like his niece, who posted a video a couple of years ago that talked about how people like us shouldn't be taking all the things we've got from him for luxury and still fighting to get better rights. Martin Luther King used that Nobel Peace Prize money and spent 50K to help the civil rights movement. Martin has done a lot more, like fun for buses for the boycott. He's done multiple marches to show that violence isn't always necessary to get what he needs. And he's had a lot of people follow behind him. He even was friends and talked to the president, John F. Kennedy, who at the time didn't want any violence himself and kind of agreed to some. Unfortunately, MLK is not with us anymore because his life was cut short 56 years ago when he was shot on his balcony in Memphis, Tennessee. But his legacy lives on with us. We love you, Martin. Martin was a very important and patient guy. Shame he couldn't see what his efforts got him today. I'm so glad that Martin got his speech out before his unfortunate death. Our next segment is Advice of the Week. Do you know that studies have shown that 20% of the young people experience depression before they reach the age of adulthood? Ejan interviewed MP staff to learn more about the risks and how to deal with depression. Depression is a mental state that can occur after an abortion event that takes place in a person's life, leading to them to have thoughts of suicide or worse. Suicide can't be prevented. Most suicidal individuals just desperately want to live. They're just able to see alternate solutions to their problems. I would describe suicide as um, it's a very touchy subject because I believe that um, it's something that as a human being, we all might have had an issue with at some point because life is life and life is not a game, it's not fun, and, and sometimes we, it's hard to find happiness in it. You see people who is full of life and decide that life is not worth living, so it's definitely something that is uh, perplexing, something that is hard to understand, but it's, um, it happens often, especially uh, in today's society. A tragedy, it's a loss um, for many people, for a community, um, and it's, it's hard to work through the, I think the best way for prevention is intervention, and I believe that if um, we as just a people collectively give a little bit more of ourselves and try to find a way to be of service to one another. I think so the best way to prevent is to, um, for someone to have someone to talk to, because a lot of times, you know, you get into this bubble um, that you see no way out. Life is like a, a, a balloon, you know. Uh, if you keep putting air in that balloon, eventually it's going to pop. But if you find a way to release some of the air from that balloon, then you have more space to, to deal with um, uh, the many complex issues. You have any thoughts of suicide, any, any contemplation of, about it, talk about it. Find somebody to talk to. There's a lot of resources out there. Um, utilize them because we are trying to prevent it as much as possible as part of the work. You know, I'm, I'm working on my counseling degree right now, so one of the things we talk about is ways to prevent and, and work with people. Um, one of the best ways to help an individual with suicide is to let them know that they're not alone, loved, and that their life is precious. What I did when I started working here at Madison because of some of the social emotional things I encountered in my role, I went and got certified as a mental health first aider for teenagers, and I'm a mental health first aid instructor. 
So these are some of the things I work with on this, outside of school. Um, and it's something I try to bring into my practice here to work with you because I believe addressing your socio-emotional is the most important part. We can always get to the academics and the athletics, but I think once we have you a barometer of your emotions, we're easy, we're able to, I think, deal with you better. So I think mental health awareness is, is key for you guys at this age. Uh, the best way is to be there for that person, to support them, to let them know they're not alone and whatever problems uh, that they're facing, there is always a solution to every problem that we face. It may not be uh, option one or two or three, but there is option. And to let them know that, um, you know, talk to someone, you know, reach out and be there for them and connect them with the resources because there are tons and tons of resources out there. You know, find someone that you trust and have a conversation. Find, help them find help. Help them get help, you know. Um, like I said, there's a lot of resources out there. And there are, there are, you know, you can help them get into a hospital if it's, if it's like urgent, urgent. Like they're in the, they're really thinking about doing it like in the moment. Get them to a hospital if there's something they're thinking about. You know, you can tell them it's okay, but they need, to see, they need, they need professional help. They need somebody to step in and give them the, the, the guidance and the supports that, that are necessary to, 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 to work through their, um, their thoughts. Some of the best ways to handle someone with suicidal tendencies is to not bring in your personal problems into their bubble of stress. Make sure to ask them if they need anything and get someone who is professional at handling people with mental illness so you can try to help them get the help that they need. What I would say to somebody who's going through it is that you're not alone. You're not alone and keep fighting. You know, there's, there's resources. You reach out if, if there's anybody in the school that may even feel that way. I'm at Office 7 through 20. It's a safe place to be and we have a lot of adults here who care about you. If you see a friend that is, um, if, that is not um, doing well, you know, reach out to them. Let them know that you're there for them. And sometimes just that one conversation. Sometimes you don't even need to be having a conversation. Just be there for them. And sometimes the silence is even, even being a silence with someone that is um, depression. No, let, let them know that you're there for them. So. Sometimes they feel alone. They feel like there's no other way out. That's what it is. That's the last resort. That's all that they can do. But they're not the only ones who feel like that, you know, and um, support groups, counseling and um, therapy and just therapy in general and, and, and support from their friends and family. That will go a long way. If you or a loved one is going through these types of depression or thoughts of suicide, please reach out to family members, relatives, friends, relationship partners or anyone you know that can help or call the Suicide Prevention Hotline so you could potentially stop a suicide. If you or anyone is experiencing depression, please contact any social workers or you can call or text specifically trained volunteers at Samaritan Statewide Helpline, 1-877-870-4673. For our upcoming events this month, don't forget, from January 4th to February 16th, we have access testing. Never ruin an apology with an excuse. Benjamin Franklin. To add on to that, always give genuine apologies. There's never really a point in giving fake ones, now is there? True. That's all we have for today. But Carnos, let's have a great year. Thank you for joining us. I'm Ijan. And I'm Adriana. See you next week on episode 10. We're reaching the double digits.